Good morning, everyone. My name is Richard Kerslake from Intel. I'm one of the co-chairs of the FIDO IoT Working Group. And I'd like to give you an update over the next 20 minutes or so on behalf of myself, uh, Giri Mandium from Qualcomm, and the rest of the IoT Working Group. The work that we've been uh, engaged with for the last two years or so is very much about onboarding. And that's really the, the essence of FDO, FIDO device onboard. What triggered this initial work was very much the realization in the industry that today, most IoT devices are onboarded in a manual fashion. Now this is slow, it's expensive and it's insecure and something that we very much felt needed to be addressed. It's an interesting challenge in that obviously the IoT market is highly fragmented. Um, you're dealing with equipment which varies in terms of operating system. The hardware varies greatly. Some devices have display, some devices don't have displayed. Uh, some are wireless, some are wired. So any solution that FIDO created needed to be very flexible. It's also worth noting that when you're looking at the installation, the current approaches really require trusted and skilled staff. And that's something where we really felt that to solve the problem, we needed to come up with a secure onboarding system that really negated the need to have trusted staff in terms of access to credentials. They may have access to the physical um, building, but not necessarily to any of the uh, credentials associated with onboarding. FIDO, I think, is clearly the perfect place to do this work. We have the right membership here, and obviously our DNA in terms of uh, moving away from passwords fits very well with the, the needs of an onboarding solution for the world of IoT. The story started, and I'll give a very quick background, in the summer of 2019, it was our first FIDO FDO working group. Um, at that meeting, uh, a number of companies came and brought around 45 different use cases that were submitted. And from those, we distilled down what we believe to be representative use cases. And then uh, from that, the decision was made at the end of 2019 that rather than start with a white sheet of paper, we would, if at all possible, build upon existing technology. And the decision of the working group was to take advantage of a technology that Intel had been working on called Intel Secure Device Onboard. And Intel offered the specification to FIDO as a starting point. Um, I'm pleased to say that in the intervening period up until the spring of this year, we've made great progress. And in the spring of 2021, the first version of the FDO FIDO device onboard specification was released. And you can see that the key editors come from uh, Intel, Amazon, AWS, Google, Microsoft, Qualcomm, and ARM. So I think we had a very good representation across the industry. Just a quick kind of reminder, we talked about the need to solve the problem. So what does FDO do? Well, the goal is a simple one. How do I arrange that I can drop ship a device to the point of installation, have someone who's semi-skilled, basically connected to the network and power it up, and then the rest of the provisioning, whether it's to, an on, uh, to a cloud or not, on-premise uh, uh, platform happens in an automatic fashion. So number one, as a benefit, clearly it needs to be zero touch for the person doing the installation. It's got to reduce costs. That's a key, key element. It needs to be fast and it needs to be secure. We talked earlier about hardware flexibility, the ability to run on anything from a small microcontroller up to a, a high performance um, uh, server class processor. Some customers clearly demand on-premise solutions. Others are happy to use internet clouds and that FDO supports both. One capability, which I think is uh, fairly unique in the industry is that FDO offers late binding. And as I'll explain in a minute, that really is important as it simplifies the supply chain when delivering a technology. Now, up until this point, we've talked about the technology and the specification. We haven't really talked about how it gets implemented. Um, what I think is particularly interesting here is that from the very beginning, the goal was to execute an open source implementation of FDO. And so we have a parallel project under Linux Foundation Edge, 
And it's currently called SDO. Uh, that's just for historic reasons. When the project was named, we hadn't decided on FDO formally. But that basically is where we're executing an open source implementation of FDO. And that's available on GitHub. And I'll be giving you an update on that. So let's talk a little bit about this late binding that I mentioned. And the point I wanted to make is that when you look today at some of the technologies in the industry that support automated onboarding, whilst they are automated, where they in general fall short is that they actually require that the credentials for the end customer be placed in the device at the point of manufacture or at some staging point. Now, whilst this works, as you can imagine, we're effectively creating one unique SKU for every single customer. And in fact, even if they all use the same cloud platform, they still need their own unique credentials and SKUs. So this creates a lot of friction in the supply chain and delays. With FDO, we don't need to do that. We can create a single SKU that passes through the supply chain and then the binding to your cloud or platform only needs to take place at the point of installation. So as you see, from a manufacturing viewpoint, a deployment viewpoint, this brings great savings. In terms of the target use cases, we very much focused initially on industrial and enterprise and work within FIDO is looking right now to say, how could we partner with other organizations to potentially uh, broaden that to more consumer centric, but FDO as you see it today, very much centric around industrial and enterprise. We try to really think about the overall ecosystem, including companies such as distributors and system integrators and VARs and real world challenges such as the resale and redeployment of devices. I'll go through this fairly briefly. Um, you can look at the specification, of course, on the FIDO website. Uh, the key point to note is at the point of manufacture, we assume that there is a root of trust on the device itself. Now, that root of trust can be in a silicon device, such as the processor or secure element, or if the customer chooses, they can store it within the file system. That's up to the customer to decide. We have a manufacturing tool that places the credentials inside of the IoT device. Here we're showing it as a security camera. Once that's done, one other element is created. It's something we call the ownership voucher, which is a digital, if you like, proof of ownership. And it's that black key in the orange circle. And it's effectively a encrypted ASCII file. That passes, text file, that passes through the supply chain in parallel to the device so that you have the device itself sitting in its box sealed, traveling through from company to company, and the key passes with it. Each time you sell the device, you can extend the ownership voucher to the next person. And now, of course, the day will come when you say, hey, I want to onboard this product. Where do I do it? So the first thing you do is you actually load the ownership voucher up to your target cloud that you've chosen to onboard to. And in turn, it registers that device or that ownership voucher with a rendezvous service, which effectively acts very much like a redirect, a DNS, if you like. Now we come to the point when the device itself is powered up. And the first thing it does is somewhat of an ET dial home and it calls the rendezvous server. And there can be more than one rendezvous server programmed into the device. It says, hey, here's my identification. Who is my pro uh, projected owner? and it's told this target cloud actually should be your owner. Now the device itself, now the rendezvous itself doesn't establish ownership, it effectively just does the redirect. It's up to the cloud and the device to authenticate against each other. We have the ownership voucher on one side, we have the root of trust on the other, which allows us to authenticate and then set up an encrypted tunnel where we can download whatever we need, whether it's credentials or potentially an agent specific to that cloud. And in fact, it's highly flexible. So customers can actually go far beyond that if they so choose. And once that's happened, data can start flowing. And here we're showing a thermocoupler or thermometer in that right, uh, orange bubble on the uh, right hand side. So if we look at this through the software lens, there are several elements to it. As I said, we're working within the Linux Foundation Edge to deliver an open source implementation. Other partners within FIDO are working on their own implementation, and I'll give you an update on that later. Now, when you look at in terms of the overall software architecture, number one, 
there's a client that runs on the IoT device, and we have multiple versions that can work, whether it's an ARM processor, an Intel processor, another processor class, or maybe you're using a TPM, any of the above can be supported. There's a manufacturing tool, number two, which actually uh, injects the credentials into the IoT device during manufacture. I talked about the function of the rendezvous server doing the redirect, that's bubble number three, and it can run on a classic cloud if you like, or if your application requires that it be on-premise, again, it's a low compute, it can run on a relatively small, in fact, a very small uh, PC if necessary. So again, doesn't require a lot of compute if it's been used in a, a typical on-prem situation. And then you notice we've got the owner, the cloud on the right-hand side, which is where you actually want the final device to connect to. Maybe it's the device management service. And then option number five is an option where if you have other folk in the supply chain, such as VARs or distributors or system integrators, they can use a reseller tool to effectively extend the ownership voucher as it supply, moves through the supply chain. So those are all of the code. And as I said, you know, anybody can go to Linux Foundation Edge, and right now you'll see that code up there within an FDO part of the project. Moving forward, um, really now we've got the initial specification out, we're moving into certification and, and security, and we're leveraging very much the infrastructure that already exists within the FIDO organization. And we're looking at creating uh, different levels, if you like, of certification, whether it's based on the questionnaire all the way up to potentially having it uh, verified through a third party lab. And so that's work that's ongoing right now. So let me just give you an overall sta status update. As I said, the specification was released 1.0 in the spring of this year. We carried out uh, a pre-interop event in October um, of this year. It was highly successful in that multiple companies, whoops, forgive me, multiple companies came to the event and we were able to really check the interop between different solutions. One small spec change has been highlighted and that will require a a change to a 1.1 release. Now, the change is well understood and approved by the working groups so that we're moving ahead with that. There were some other clarifications that also were highlighted, but uh, we've successfully moved through the, the pre-interop event, and I think we feel very comfortable now moving forward with the 1.1 specification. Now, we're working on that draft. We expect to have it done in December. And obviously, with approval from the FIDO board, we hope to make it publicly available in December of 2021 so that people can actually see that it's a small change and can move and act upon it. As I said, there's a software implementation taking place within uh, the Linux Foundation Edge project. And that work to develop the FIDO 1.1 implementation is already underway and progressing well. So as we look into early 2022, um, we expect, based on our current progress, to have the 1.1 spec released and approved uh, by the board if we continue to progress at this rate, certainly in first quarter. Uh, we're hoping to have, as I mentioned, a draft made public before that, again, with board approval. And then the open source implementation, the current uh, schedule suggests that companies can actually get the 1.1 early access as early as week five of next year. So pretty much in February, and then a final release will come soon after. So with our partners within FIDO, within the industry in general, we're really seeing momentum grow for FDO. Um, there's a lot of activity right now with companies um, starting to look at how they can take advantage of this technology. And I would say that whether you're an OEM, an ODM, maybe a software ISV partner or a CSP, this is absolutely the right time to engage on FDO. There's no need at all to wait. Uh, the code is there, the spec is there, and very soon, hopefully, we'll be able to show you the small changes we're making on 1.1. So I would very much actively encourage folk to, to get involved. Um, moving forward, as we kind of close out 2021 and move into 2022, three major areas. Number one, really start working on the industry adoption. Um, particularly working with other folk in the supply chain, whether it's OEMs, ODMs, silicon partners, to really get that uh, buy-in and build overall a broader ecosystem. Number two, 
Um, as I said, we've got work already going on certification programs on security and on uh, functional certification. And as you heard, the pre-interop is already going, has already passed, and we'll be moving into the interop phase. So that's, I think, progressing nicely. And then certainly uh, one thing we're thinking about, it's kind of what comes next. And that's a combination of things. We're looking at what additional materials, white papers, documentation, apps, notes would make it easier for companies to understand and deploy the technology. And clearly, you know, we can expand. I think FDO is the foundation of uh, what will become a multitude of different services and capabilities. And so the working group is starting to ask what comes next and we'll, we'll start uh, getting into execution phase on that. So thank you very much for your interest. Very much look forward to working with you actively in 2022. Thank you.